And despite the withdrawal being well underway, prominent U.S. politicians and retired generals are demanding the continuation of the 20-year campaign. But it seems that the mainstream outlets that these people are being heard on are ignoring the fact that some have vested interests in the companies profiting from the war. More on that next from Donald Corter. Continue the Afghanistan occupation. Calls to delay the pullout of U.S.-led coalition troops have hit the mainstream media. When the decision was announced months ago, I said that I feared that we would come to regret this decision. And we already are. This, again, is a nightmare. When we were there, we had the cooperation of the Afghans. We worked with the military. There were a lot of partnerships involved. This is a national security threat. Are these just a bunch of overly patriotic Americans? It's unlikely. You see, the Taliban's victory crashed the profit party of America's gigantic military-industrial complex. And the mainstream media often omit that many overly jingoistic military officials have investments in that very institution. Take former U.S. General Jay Keane. He also happens to be the chair of the company that produces Humvees and sits on the board of another company that produces military equipment. So wouldn't you know he thinks it was a bad idea to leave Afghanistan. I think the administration made a terrible mistake in, in pulling our troops out and, and giving the Taliban the opportunity to take the country over. And, and now we're going to inherit the, an epicenter of radical Islam right inside of in, inside of Afghanistan, it's going to become a more dangerous place. There's also retired U.S. General David Petraeus, a partner at a global private equity firm called KKR, which has assets in the U.S. defense sector. And Richard Haas is a former White House advisor who sits on the board of the investment firm Lazard, a firm that also serves defense companies. And we can't forget former U.S. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta, a senior counselor at Beacon Global Strategies, hardly an unbiased party. Another fair mention is Florida Republican Mike Waltz, who made up to $25 million in profits after selling a defense firm which has offices in Afghanistan. The problem is terrorism that happens in Afghanistan doesn't stay in Afghanistan. We will see al-Qaeda 3.0. They are working closely with the Taliban. And they do intend to attack America again. Former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice offered her two cents on why America's longest war was not long enough. 20 years may also not have been enough to consolidate our gains against terrorism and assure our own safety. We and they needed more time. Once again, Rice's place on the board of C3AI, a defense contracting company, is conveniently left out of her article. With all these powerful officials having one foot in the capitalist pool and the other in that of the U.S. government, it's not hard to imagine why endless war is a very lucrative business decision for some. As stock returns from 2001 to 2021 for government-contracted arms companies like Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman totaled more than 1,000 percent. And WikiLeaks founder and whistleblower Julian Assange tried to warn the world about it years ago. The goal is to use Afghanistan to wash money out of the tax bases of the United States, out of the tax bases of European countries, through Afghanistan and back into the hands of a transnational security elite. That is the goal, i.e. the goal is to have an endless war, not a successful war. For some reason, the mainstream media doesn't seem to find it necessary to tell their viewers that the experts they invite to inform public opinion on the Afghan war have a very specific agenda of their own. Well, underlining some of that, the scale of America's failure in Afghanistan has been revealed in 20 declassified documents published by the U.S. National Security Archive. Uh, one shows the extent to which the calamity was consistently and deliberately hidden from the public. Back in 2002, then Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld was worried that the Afghan mission was drifting, but never mentioned it publicly, rather arguing that there was no point in negotiating with the remnants of the Taliban. And more than a decade after that, an American diplomat had the same concerns. The first question of did we know what we were doing, I think the answer is no. If there was ever a notion of mission creep, it is Afghanistan. We went from saying that we'll get rid of Al-Qaeda so they can threaten us to saying we're going to end the Taliban. Then we said that we will get all the troops the Taliban works with. Then further to having our exit strategy be a stable government in Afghanistan. We have to say good enough is good enough. That's why we're there 15 years later.
Well, back in 2011, Julian Assange said the ultimate goal of the U.S. military campaign in Afghanistan was to create an endless war, not a successful one, as we heard earlier. Uh, WikiLeaks editor-in-chief told me that the new documents vindicate the group's leaks a decade ago. It was supported by uh, all the revelations that came out of the uh, documents uh, published by WikiLeaks 11 years ago. Uh, some of them, of course, were from earlier period. Uh, the CIA documents, uh, diplomatic cables, military documents. It all painted the, uh, the, uh, the truth, uh, the, the true picture of what was going on in Afghanistan 11 years ago. Uh, and uh, it was... Uh, uh, somehow didn't register. The, uh, the lie continued, and that is uh, the, uh, uh, the most surprising thing about uh, the, the current events, uh, basically, is, is uh, and, and I think that the mainstream media has come to reckon with this, uh, how was it possible for 20 years to maintain the lie of what was going on inside uh, yeah, Afghanistan. Julian Assange also said that the Afghan war was being used to launder American and European money. What, what did he mean by that? The trillion dollar plus, uh, the trillion dollars probably under uh, estimate, uh, did uh, were go into U.S. Uh, uh, pockets, the military industrial complex, the, uh, the private contractors like DynCorp who were supposed to be training the Afghan police, etc. It uh, was a, a massive flow of money that went into uh, the wrong pocket. It can only be called corruption on a large scale. Uh, on top of that, of course, there is uh, the, the corruption inside Afghanistan, uh, where basically money was used as kerosene to, to pump on the fire. There were no logs put on the fire, just uh, gasoline being pumped on the fire. That does not create uh, a lasting bonfire. Everybody knows that. The surge of people fleeing Afghanistan is creating a security nightmare for Europe.